Hello everyone, how are we all doing today? What's the weather like where you are? I think we normally do the weather report and we didn't do it today. It is really frosty where we are. So have we got anybody with any sunshine? What have we got? Um, lovely and sunny. Oh, Jane, we want some sun. Um, cold and sunny, sunshine, sunny. It is frosty. It is really... Um, we had to defrost the car this morning. Have you got lots of frost, Carol? Where are you? Are you somewhere close to us? Oh, we've got loads of people from all over. Anybody from anywhere outside the UK today? I could do this all day. Karen will be looking at me going, yeah, you need to talk about time management. And we are. We're going to crack on, I think, but you can t keep telling me where, where you are because I like, actually like just looking up and seeing where you all are calling in from. Is anybody here for the first time? some for the first timers well welcome anyone been on one of my training sessions before i should have asked a different question really um because all i'm seeing is yes is <laughs> yes is now so i don't know what you're answering to right today's topic was decided actually on the last webinar that i did i don't know if anybody was here last month and it's a topic that I do at least once a year because time management remains one of the most requested topics. And it's a subject that I'm always being asked about. So before we get cracking, the very first question that I have for you today is how does time at the moment make you feel? So when you leave work at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day, how does it actually make you feel? So just have a, a think, put it in the chat box, and then we'll have a chat about it. What have we got? Stress, sad. Why does it make you feel sad? Um, stress because there's not enough, there's not enough hours in the day. Oh, it makes you feel calm. Brilliant. Well, I'd love to know what, what you do then, James, to make, it, make you feel calm. We've got a few not enough hours in the day. The reason being is here in the 21st century, we're actually trying to cram an awful lot more into our, our busy schedules. And the only problem with this is we've only still got the same amount of time to play with. So that leaves us feeling overwhelmed, frustrated, panicked, and like we're meeting ourselves coming back. Oh, you, you're meditating at the moment. You're keeping in the moment. That's great, James. Any other feelings? So any, can anyone relate with feeling overwhelmed, frustrated, panicked? meeting ourselves coming back, like you're juggling, like you're spinning plates. Because today I'm going to be sharing some of my top productivity tips in the hope that something helps you too. I've also got a lot of emails from people asking for things to be covered and sharing what their time management pains were. So I've incorporated these as well. Um, you can definitely relate to juggling. Anything else like that? Anyone got any other metaphors that they, they tend to... Um, used to identify how they're feeling. So we've got juggling, spinning plates, uh, things that I've heard before are, are swimming upstream, treading water, anything like that. Whilst you're having a think, oh, am I using that or that? Sorry, I'm just going to get on to this, get my slides. Like playing Tetris. Oh, I love that. I don't love that that's how you feel, but I love that, that, um, that analogy. So you're constantly trying to fit pieces in, wading through treacle, um, you've got lots of devices, yeah, anything else, keep them coming, because I like to hear how, how you can describe your day. So whilst you're doing that, I will tell you a little bit about me. I'm a leadership coach, trainer and writer, and I work with managers at all levels, from team leaders and supervisors through to directors and business owners, and I've been doing this for over six years, although I've been in learning and development for nearly 20. It really doesn't feel that long. I started my journey in retail where I did 12 years as a training manager, and then I started my own training consultancy right at the start of the recession in 2010. And over the years, I've had the pleasure of working in lots of different businesses and with lots of, lots of leaders at all levels of their careers. And it's something that I absolutely love to do. In fact, over the years, I've worked with hundreds of managers, helping them feel more confident and capable to manage their people effectively. And as I say, it is something that I really love doing because I'm so passionate about managers and leaders being the key players in any business. Now, I do this by coaching people on a one-to-one -one basis, whether that's face-to-face -face or via um, Skype or on the phone. 
I also run a management program which is aimed at team leaders, supervisors and managers. And as well as these programs, I run webinars like this one, which um, I do every month. And I have a weekly blog, and I've just launched a book which is now on Amazon called The Boss Hat. And I also have an online program of the same name. So if any of this interests you, please do come on over and join me. I'm on Twitter. I don't know if you're on Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook, and you can connect with me there. I also just want to give you a bit of heads up with what you can expect from this training. I'm very much about learning without feeling overwhelmed. I know only too well that it can be tempting when you come on training like this and you want to implement everything. And that's great. But what usually happens is it's not really realistic and you end up implementing nothing and slipping back into your old comfy ways. So in order to sidestep this, have a go at keeping in mind what one thing would add most value. So look for that one gem for you and focus on that. And that'll be different for everybody. And you can always come back later and do something else once you've nailed the first thing. So I'm just looking back at the, the, um, the chat and we've got herding squirrels. I love that one as well. Some really good ones here, um, herding squirrels. I've heard of herding cats, but not herding squirrels. I can just imagine that. So my next question to you is, what is your biggest frustration with your day at the minute? So what is driving you completely bonkers? So have a think again and just stick it in the chat box. What is driving you bonkers about your day at the minute? So we've got not within your control. We've got interruptions. We've got um, pointless and seemingly endless meetings, multiple urgent demands, lack of structure direction. Um, if I miss yours out, I'm really sorry because it's moving really fast. So I'll... Um, We've got not enough hours, too much urgency, other people having unrealistic expectations about timescales, emails, doing the same thing over and over again, back-to-back um, -back meetings and no time to do any work, emails, lack of clarity without priorities. Fantastic. Um, thank you so much for joining in on the chat. I really do appreciate it, and it, it does make it a lot more interesting for everybody. There's a rec as you can see, there's recurring things that are coming up time and time again for everybody. And when I speak to people about time, the most common complaints are everything that you've already mentioned in terms of emails, meetings, um, lack of structure. But if I was to um, put it into two statements, it would be there's not enough, there's too much to do and not enough time, which is what I think you said earlier on in the chat. And I never get done what I planned because something always gets in the way. Do any of these ring true for you? And if so, which one in particular out of these two is your nemesis? You can just say one or two rather. I think you've got to type everything out. Second one, second one, two, two. Yeah, everybody, yeah, leaning to, oh, we've got one there, another couple of ones. Yeah. I think we're probably leaning towards two. Um, so we are going to be covering these today, and all of that will, throughout all of that, we're going to be talking about how to control your day and your day not controlling you. So let me ask you another question. If you worked around the clock for the next month, would you still have things on your to-do list? But if you worked around the clock for the next month, would you still have things on your to-do list? We've got yeses, yes, 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 yes. What about you, Karen? Would you still have stuff to do? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I would too. Um, yes, yes. Um, okay. So absolutely, it's a, it's a big fat yes for everybody, isn't it? And it certainly would be for me because it doesn't matter how many hours we work. What matters is how effective we are. And somebody once said to me, it's about leaving work with a clear conscience and not a clear entry. And that quote has always stayed with me, especially on those days when I just keep going and don't stop. And I'm sure you can relate on those days that you, where you just keep going. Because when we are in that, in that mode, we're not actually doing ourselves or our teams any favors by getting into the habit of working really long hours. As no matter what we do, there's always going to be more to do, as we've already decided. Because more importantly, you're actually sending a clear message to the people that you work with that long hours are acceptable. 
And it doesn't matter how many times you tell people to go home or that just because you're working late doesn't mean to say they have to, but the message still seeps into their subconscious as bright as a neon sign and pretty soon you've got a team working all hours and potentially a problem with feeling stressed and that they don't have any balance in their life. And who actually needs that? So we've got to be mindful of the people that we're working with and that we're not sending um, the wrong message. And one of the biggest problems that I see time and time again is the way that we use our to-do list. So give me a yes in the chat box if you use a to-do list. Yep, yep, loads of yeses, loads of yeses. And I do too. I'm a massive fan of the to-do list. But I also see all too often where people are setting themselves up to fail. Because here's what I see. And again, just say... Um, Give me a hands up or a, chat, a yes in the chat box if this is you or you can relate in any way. Whether you've got a notebook and it's got all of your tasks in there. So in short, it's got every single thing that you need to do. It's what one of my clients calls a mother list. Has anyone got a list like this where you've got everything on there? Yep, yep, yep. So a couple of no's. That's good. Yes. Yeah, you're in the process of rewriting. Yeah, you use a mind map, a mother list. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to actually change how you manage your to-do list because this can make a massive difference to not only how you manage your day but also how you feel at the end of the day. Okay, so my first tip here is change the way you use your list. Let's have a look there. Okay, so in order to do this, and you can scribble this down if you've got um, a pen and um, paper handy. Or if you've got your mother list to hand, you can have a go and, and work with me here. Um, the first thing you need to do is get your list. So get, get your mother list. And this is the one with absolutely everything on it. So whether you use mind map or, or any other kind of list, then have a look down and see if everything on there actually needs to be done or whether some of them are actually nice to have. If you've got some nice-to-haves on there, make a decision whether you need to transfer them to another list for another day or delegate them. So that's your first job. Then once you've done that, decide what absolutely needs to be done today and then highlight these. And then next to each task, write down how long each one should take. Now we are talking finger in the air here, so it is an estimation. But be uh, realistic about this. So don't write down 20 minutes when it, it should take you an hour. And I know that you might be thinking that in real life you're going to get interrupted, but try not to think about that too much. We are going to be coming back to that in a minute. So you've got your list and you should have your times next to it. Now, once you've got your times, have a go at adding up all the times that you've estimated and see how long you need to do these tasks. If you could, just sit down and just get busy. Because quite often, when I do this exercise with people, they end up with needing a lot more time than there is available. So you know that before you even start, you're setting yourself up to fail because you've not even taken into consideration the amount of interruptions you get throughout your day yet. So this is where you have another look to see what you can realistically do in your day and you get started on that. Now you might find yourself saying, but I need to do all of it. But the problem is that chances are you wouldn't get all of it done anyway before you'd work at it, not get it done and leave work feeling miserable, stressed, all the, 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 the words that you mentioned earlier. And this way, you're much more aware of what you're working on so you can be a lot more effective before you start. Now, this is only half the process so far and we're going to come to the rest in a minute. But I want to tell you that I personally use this process every single day and it works a dream. And I know loads of people that work this way now and it really does work for them. Now, you might find as you start going through this process that you're going to feel as though it's taking up time that you could be working. So whilst you're doing your list and then putting times next to everything, you think, oh, actually, I could have done a couple of these things by now. But just have in your mind that this is a classic case of short-term pain for long-term gain. And in time, you're going to be doing it without even thinking about it. When I first started, I was, I was doing what I've just described, writing my list and then going back and writing my times. Now when I write my list, I write the task and roughly the time I want to allocate all in one go so I don't feel the need to go back and review it. So once, now that we've got the tasks and the times that you need, the next step is to think about what time you've actually got available in the day rather than assuming. 
Everybody happy so far? Yep, so all we've done is write your list and put your times on it. Okay, so let's pretend that we work for eight hours a day. Now, I know you might work for longer, but I'm going to go for easy maths. And then let's pretend you have a meeting that's going to last an hour. Again, you've probably got a few meetings, but just we're going to make it easy for ourselves. So you've got a meeting that lasts an hour. And let's pretend you're going to have an hour for lunch. And again, I know you might be thinking that chance would be a fine thing, but go with me. And that you have about an hour's worth of interruptions a day. So that leaves you five hours to actually do some head down, focus work. And herein lies the problem for a lot of us. We try and cram a full day's work, so a full eight hours work, into about five hours that we've actually got available for doing that work. And then we get really annoyed and hacked off at the end of the day when we don't actually achieve it, which then has a negative impact on us personally, on other people around us. Or we might just end up working longer hours just to catch up. Or we might just feel a bit rubbish when we're leaving work. Does that make sense? Yep. So we're going to come back to interruptions in a bit. But now that you've got your realistic to-do list, so you've got your, the amount of time that you know that you've got available in your day, and you've got your tasks, and you've got your times, all that you need to do is literally set your alarm on your phone and get to work. Now, my top tip when you set an alarm or use an alarm at work is to change it to something mellow like chime or crystals um, or something then rather than using a wake-up alarm <laughs> that will scare the whole office. So that's just a, a little aside just to remember. Now, you'll find that once you follow this, as you're working through, it will really help you focus on one thing at once rather than trying to multitask. Because if you don't get done before the alarm goes off, you're probably going to be in the zone and you're going to keep going anyway. And if you finish before the time is up, you'll get some time back and you just go on to the next task and just keep going. Now, the one word of caution here... Oh, sorry, I'd completely forgotten about my slides. The one word of caution here is if you get interrupted as you're doing this, just pause your timer and then start the timer once you've dealt with whatever it is. That way, you're just focusing on one thing at once. So as you're working, just pause your timer, deal with whatever the interruption is, and then start it afterwards. So that was tip number one. And I know it was a bit of a biggie, but any, if you've got any questions, please put them in, in the chat box. But the next tip is dealing with interruptions. Um, and also looking at all the extra bits that you do, but interruptions mainly, because I know a few of you have said interruptions is um, your annoying bit about your day earlier on in the chat. Now, the problem with time for most people is how it makes you feel. So let me ask you this question. How does it feel and I think we've, we've mentioned this earlier on, really, but how does it feel when you get to the end of the day and you haven't really achieved what you wanted to? So how does it feel at the end of the day when you haven't achieved what you wanted to? We've got demoralizing, worrying. Thank you. You think about tomorrow, like you failed, like you're doing a rubbish job. Yeah. Yeah, things I hear are unproductive, miserable, like it's just been a complete waste of time, that you just feel deflated. These are all just really negative emotions. So you leave work, oh, do you know, what was the point in that? You're disappointed. Yeah, so we've got your range from disappointed to failure, depending on the day. So all really negative emotions. And who needs to feel that at the end of the day? Well, especially when you've been working really hard. But the thing to, that you've got to remember here is that as a manager, doing your to-do list and your tasks on your to-do list is just part of the job. You've also got your team to cater for and your customers and the business. And often these are the things that throw up unexpected things throughout your day. But when we go into work at the start of the day, we tend to dread the interruptions rather than think of them as one giant task that we've got to do. And it actually comes with the job. So just by changing the way we think about interruptions, we're going to start to feel a bit better. Saying that, there is something we can do to minimize the number of interruptions that we get. How many interruptions or how, how much time do interruptions take roughly if you were just to estimate, just out of interest for you? So 50% of your time, yeah. 
couple of hours. So it's good that you're actually you've got an awareness of roughly how much time interruptions you, how, how how much time interruptions take. Because as you go through your day, whenever you get an interruption, whether that's a phone call or someone arrives at your desk and you have to sort something out, or you get an unexpected urgent task that you need to do, I'd like you to have a go at scribbling down um, the interruption at the bottom of your to-do list. So when you get an interruption, scribble it down at the bottom of your to-do list because it actually does three things. It gives you a sense of achievement that you really need at the end of the day when you think that you haven't done much, but you've actually done loads. So you know that feeling when you're feeling absolutely shattered at the end of the day, but you can't remember what you've done of any value because you've not crossed anything off your to-do list. This will stop that. So straight away, that negative feeling that you've already mentioned just now, so the feeling of frustration and de being demoralized, that'll stop that straight away. Number two, it provides you with some really valuable information. You are going to be able to see clearly just what the interruptions are and whether you can do anything about them. You'll be able to see whether there's any patterns with the same thing coming up time and time again. So if so, you can put in a fix, whether it's some training or address it at your next team meeting or tell everyone what the answer is so it's sorted. Even if it's something that you can put on your website or your intranet or a shared folder so that everyone knows the answer. It could also be telling you whether you need to tweak your communication strategy so that every morning or once a week you update everyone with what they need to know so it stops these persistent questions. And the third thing is it'll show you how you're handling the interruptions and whether that's actually the problem. Now, the reason I say this is that when we're busy, the quickest and easiest thing to do when someone comes to your desk with a problem or a decision or even a question is just to answer them. Because A, we don't want them taking root at your desk, and B, because you've got stuff to do and this is going to send them away faster. Does it? Can anyone relate with that? But all that does in the short term, yep, so we've got some yeses, yeses. And this is great in the short term, but all it does in the long term is train them that when they come with a question or a problem or a decision is that you're going to fix it. And how great is that? They come and you fix it. So minimal effort from them, really. And more to the point, then they end up with the illusion that you actually like them coming to your desk because they're getting your approval. And you need to know what's going on and other myths like that. But chances are none of that's true. So the next thing I'd like you to have a go at is retraining your team and yourself. Now, I say yourself because you've got, got into the habit and you're going to feel the pain a little bit as you get out of it. So if you've ever given up anything like smoking or chocolate or anything, you're going to know that it's actually a bit tricky to give up a habit. But here's the challenge. Instead of just diving in and answering a question or fixing a problem, have a go at pushing back. So here's what I mean. Let me just catch up with the slides. So, so rather than just fixing the problem, ask the person what they think. Ask them what they think the answer is or what they're planning to do next to resolve the issue. You could even ask them to come up with some solutions and then come back to you. So just very gently push back and start to coach them through the process by asking good open questions so the person comes up with their own solutions. So what do you think you should do? What do you think would work? What solutions have you come up with? Who can help? How much will it cost? What needs to happen to get this resolved? And so on. So what you're actually doing is gently retraining your team to be more self-sufficient so they end up coming to you with solutions eventually or just to get your final stamp of approval if you need it. Now the other thing to be mindful of is that if you've got someone coming to your desk and it's not a good time because you're in the middle of, of focusing on a time task, like we said earlier, then just say so. You don't always have to jump every time someone
Hello? Can anyone hear me? Just say yes if you can hear. Oh, brilliant. Sorry, we've had a technical glitch here. We'll just sort ourselves out. Sorry about that. Is everybody back in with us? Okay. So what was I, what was I saying? Um, do, 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 do. Anyone remind me what I was saying? Is anyone listening? Um, we were talking about interruptions. Don't be afraid to say you're busy. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, don't be afraid to say you're busy. Um, because all you're doing, if you're, you're just being honest, explain that you're in the middle of something and that you're going to come back to them and then say your time and then make sure you stick to it. So this isn't um, a catch-all, as in I'm busy all the time. This is um, I'm, I'm busy right now. Can we actually get back together at whatever time is good for you? And then just make sure you stick to it. Because on the whole, people will really understand and as a result, you are going to feel much more in control and not as reactive. Okay, so any questions about interruptions? Right, then let's move on to our next tip. And this is work when you're at your best. Now, we all have a best time of day. Personally, I'm not a morning person. My brain doesn't actually come to life until probably about half past nine. Because of, uh, of that, as a result, I save all of my big tasks until later in the day. So if you're a morning person, how many people here are morning people? And you're at the, your very best first thing, then, <laughs> Michelle, you're saying no. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. Uh, I'm not a morning person either. Sound is a bit iffy again. I think on the hook, I think people can... Is everybody all right hearing me? Yep, yeah, yeah, fine. Well, we'll keep going. So, yeah, so just a, a, a straw poll for you morning pe people. What's the very first task that you do when you go into work at the um, in the morning? Very first, yeah, task that you do when you go into work in the morning. Yeah, and this is what I see every single time. So my challenge to you morning people is to not check your emails first thing. And I know that's going to be a bit of a, a habit change. If you need to, because of the nature of your job, and you just need to check that everything's on um, tickety-boo and nothing's actually urgent, needs your attention, then just have a quick scan for, a, I don't know, seven to ten minutes, but no longer than that. Because your brain is actually working at its best at that time so find something on your to-do list and crack on with that if you're able to and likewise in for for us afternoon people or certainly later in the day do your focus tasks then and try and do um you can you can do your emails first thing you know something that doesn't require an awful lot of thought okay so work out when you're at your best and use that so work within your own um, body clock rather than against it so the next tip that I've got for you is book some time out. So one's missing. The tip number five is missing. So the next tip was book some time out for yourself each week. So because of our busy lives, so many of us actually live in reactive mode. If you live in reactive mode, again, just give me a yes in the chat. However, even though being reactive is a great skill to, to have, so being able to think on the fly is, is an amazing skill, you might still yearn to be a little bit more proactive just so you can tip that balance a bit so you can feel more in control. So if this is you, have a go at booking some time with yourself each week. So have a go at booking some time in your diary every single week for you because this simple habit really does have an awful lot of power. The secret here is to treat this time as sacred and not just let it go if somebody else needs some time with you. Because during this time, you can plan and force yourself to be a bit more proactive. And you will um, feel a lot more in control just by having that bandwidth and that headspace just to, to do a bit more planning. Because you've, you've planned for it. You've booked some time in. Now, the final tip that I have is about our good friend procrastination. Hands up if you procrastinate. I think everybody, yeah, we've got hands up here. I've got my hand up as well. I think we all do it from time to time, don't we? 
Yeah, don't we all? Absolutely, of course we do. Yeah. And we can often beat ourselves up if we find ourselves not doing something that we should and doing something else like filing or admin or something a little bit um, that you don't have to think about. Uh, but here's the thing. If you find yourself in this situation, try not to be too hard on yourself because it's actually a really good way of helping your brain to sort through problems and get to the root cause quicker than if you were constantly working. So let me explain. Have you ever found yourself getting great ideas when you were doing nothing or seemingly nothing? So something like taking a bath or a shower or walking the dog, washing up, um, gardening, driving home, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, usually driving home, yes. Yeah, mine's when I'm walking the dog. And the reason for this is our brains actually need a break from working to do so much um, some much needed admin and processing. And when we've got downtime, it actually allows us to do that because our brain doesn't ever stop. And whilst it's doing its own admin, it will still be working on things that you need it to. And I call this process percolating. The secret here is to do a sense check on how you're feeling. So if you're procrastinating, just have a bit of a sense check on how you're feeling at that time. If you're feeling a bit guilty like you should be doing something else, then chances are that you should and you are procrastinating and you need to crack on. But if you feel okay and that you're actually needing this time out to mull something over, then go with it and do something that you don't actually have to think about. Because chances are when you start working on the focus task um, again, you're going to get it done a lot quicker and with a, a lot more ease. So these are my tips for how to get back in control of your day today. I would love to hear your gems, the things that you're actually going to put into practice and you're going to have a go at. And also, if you've got any questions, now's your chance to put it in the, in the chat box and I will answer those. Also, I do want to apologize for our, um, our technical glitch. Made it all the more exciting, I think, didn't it? <laughs> That's never happened to me before, so it's all good fun. So any questions, and if you could share your um, gems, that would be brilliant. And likewise, if you have a go at anything um, after today, then please feel free to just let me know. You can do that again through Facebook, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, um, or just drop me an email, because I'd love to know how you're getting on. So interruptions are a task. Brilliant. So that's your gem. Thank you. Same. Yeah. I think often with interruptions, if you change the way that you think about them or how you feel about them, you'll it'll make things easier. Yeah, you've never measured them before. Brilliant. Let me know how you get on. Yes, yeah, setting a time against your tasks. Um, any tips on dealing with unrealistic expectations of the powers that be? What I would suggest is if you've, you look at your, um, if you actually take a, a log over the next couple of days of any interruptions that you're getting and just how much you're doing, then you can actually use that as, as information. So when somebody's asking you to do something that's unrealistic, when you've got lots to do, you can actually show what you're on with at the moment and say, could, is there anything that you want me to stop doing? So have a go at doing that, just keeping a track of what you're on with. Um, I hope that helps, Michelle. Um, what have we got? Use follow-up in Outlook. You can then forget the email exists until you need to action it. Great tip. More realistic time you have in a day. I always look to get eight hours working a lot less, plus I underestimate time against tasks. Yeah, definitely. Just um, yeah, recalculate how much time you actually have got to sit down and, and do some focus work. You love the idea of percolation. Thanks for sharing it. I also need to get back in the habit of recording everything I do, including interruptions and unexpected things. They suspect they account for more of my time than I realize I, I would absolutely agree with you there um but in planning time weekly in my diary brilliant oh good let me know how you get on with that you put in half an hour in your diary each day to do follow-up emails brilliant you're going to make time to eat away from your desk and get off oh, get some fresh air i love that james definitely do that that's a good habit to get into 
Well, thank you so much. If you think of any questions after today, please do feel free to, to um, drop me a note. And um, I've just really enjoyed hanging out with you this afternoon. Hope it was useful for you. And I will talk to you soon. See you later. Bye.